how a, for lack of a better word, reaction goes. How does a reaction happen? How does it go? Well, let's say you have A and B. They're two molecules or atoms or whatever. They're flying towards each other. They have a certain kinetic energy. E sub K stands for kinetic energy. And uh, boom. There are some interaction, maybe energy is released, and you have A, B forming. That's like the simple way. What are the factors that allow for this to happen? Well, uh, A and B must hit dead on. Okay, does that make sense? See, if they miss each other, or if they just tag each other on the side, uh, it's not going to work. So they must hit dead on direct. A direct hit. And then the A and B must have combined kinetic energies that are high enough to allow for bond formation. So their kinetic energies that they come in with must be high enough to allow for bond formation. Okay, so uh, let me uh, toss in a couple concepts that uh, go with what I just told you. One, uh, collision frequency. You saw this in the gas chapter. It's the number of collisions per time, per unit time. So 10 collisions per unit time, a million collisions per unit time, that sort of thing. On average for a gas, how many collisions do you think happen per second? 10 to the, approximately 10 to the 30th collision per second. In the air, it's just crazy. Things are hitting each other all over the place. If every collision that happened uh, yielded a product, we'd have about a million molar per second of products being made. So, which is a lot. If you think, uh, in lab, you're using three molar sulfuric acid. You have a million molar every single second if every collision yielded a product. However, they don't. So actually, for every collision that happens, you're, we're looking at about 10 to the minus 4 molar per second. So uh, a drop of 10 to the 10 of what actually yields a product for all the possible collisions that happen. So the main concept here is only a fraction of collisions yield product. Only a fraction of collisions actually yield product. But the higher, the more collisions, the more likelihood that there's product, if that makes sense. So if you can increase your collisions, you will increase the amount of products that you can make. Okay, two. Activation. Energy. Activation energy. This is the minimum energy uh, above the, for which the average kinetic energy that they're coming in with, uh, for which to allow for reaction. Oh, that totally sounded confusing. Uh, with the combined kinetic energy, they must be equal to or higher than the, what's called the activation energy. Maybe that sounds better. So uh, the activation energy is the energy needed for reaction. So let's say that's 100 joules. You need the kinetic energy of A and B to each be 50 joules to add up to the kinetic energy to allow the reaction to happen. So if uh, the activation energy, again, is 100 joules and each is coming in with 10 joules, that's not going to be enough energy to allow the reaction to happen. So there will be a collision, but no reaction. Um, <coughs> so there's a certain, I guess, threshold energy over which you must overcome uh, for the reaction to happen. For example, uh, let's say you wanted to hike to Lake Tahoe. And so you have to hike over the Sierra Nevadas. You think, do I have the energy to do that? No, so I'm not going. 
But my mom just bought me a car. Yes, I am going. Does that make sense? So do I have the energy to complete that? Uh, if you're walking, probably not. But you know, if you have the means, the energy, uh, like a car or something to get you there, then you can do You can overcome the barrier of the big mountains. OK, number three. So I hope you're writing some of these, uh, you know, the explanation of these concepts down. Orientation. Orientation. Uh, the molecules have to be oriented in the right way so when they hit, the product can actually form. Uh, let me show you an example. So this one I'll, I'll need to draw out. Uh, let's say we have N. To, oh, looks like that. And uh, it's reacting uh, with NO. And let's say, I'll draw this in a different color. Let's say, so this is N2O uh, reacting with NO. Let's say the NO flies in that way and collides. Not going to react. No reaction. X. Let's say it flies in this way not going to react. So let's say it flies in uh, this way, with the O hitting it head on, you know, straight on, not going to react. But if it flies in that way with the, uh, with the end pointed inwards, then that will, that will react. So that's orientation. In the previous uh, three examples, it wasn't oriented correctly for it to react. But in the bottom one, where it just goes head on with the nitrogen of the molecule on the right hitting the oxygen on the left, it can react in that case. So you can see it has to be oriented just right, hit dead on uh, for the reaction to happen. And in that case, uh, you'll end up with, in, in uh, that case, you'll, oops, uh, you'll end up with the following products. Uh, Nitrogen triple bonded and uh, plus and O2. So in the very bottom case, you actually yield products and products I wrote down there. So just, this is just one example of how orientation works. Uh, something uh, that sort of goes along with this with the orientation uh, in this reaction I wrote out as an example is what's called the transition state transition state theory. So let's take our example of the N2O plus the NO uh, reacting. I'm going to use double barbed arrows to show it could be reversible. In this case, let's say it hits dead on. The orientation's perfect. The kinetic energy is perfect. Uh, what's going to start to happen when they interact, when they hit, this bond will start to break. And I'll show breaking by dots. It'll start to break. Uh, and this bond will start to form. So also forming kind of like a half bond with little dots there. And this is called the transition state. Uh, there are partial bonds here. These are partial bonds. Uh, or some people call this an activated complex. And this is the transition state, the very highest uh, energy point. And this is where it can decide, if, do I feel like going backwards or do I feel like making the product? And here's the transition state where it's going to decide, do I want to make that transition or not? If it decides to do so, it will completely go all the way. So I'll show a single headed arrow here to form, as we saw earlier, the N2 plus the O and O. If it decided it didn't want to go, it go back to the original reactants. That's called a transition state theory.